it's something that's on our radar, something that we're going to be budgeting for, and something that we're going to have to keep our eye on. Lake Michigan water levels have been a major problem for a few years now, and anyone that lives on or near our lake shore knows firsthand how bad it is. Yeah, let's look at some of those numbers. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, hundreds of millions of dollars have been lost by the 40 million people and industries in the Great Lakes Basin. About 15% of the United States and 15% of Canada's population live along or near the 9,000 kilometer long coastline of the Great Lakes. And about 83% of the shoreline is privately owned with property values as high as 10,000 per linear foot of lakefront. Now our Candace Monticelli has a closer look into the erosion happening and where the water levels stand today. Last year, the high record-breaking Lake Michigan water levels were seen all along our lakeshore. Now, at this point of the year, Lake Michigan water levels have dropped by more than a foot. But city officials are still on high alert and know they are not in the clear. All of this was underwater. A problem years in the making that will take years to fix, plus millions of dollars in repairs. Lake Michigan, that so many Michiganders love, continues to cause devastating coastal erosion. Deanna Apps with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says last year Lake Michigan and Lake Huron set record high water levels January through August but this year we have seen water levels drop in the last six months we've really seen drier conditions in, in the region and so we've seen a larger than average seasonal decline on Lakes Michigan Huron and so far this season, we've seen really a limit in the seasonal rise as well. If we go in depth, we know Lake Michigan water levels were down about 14 inches below last April's monthly mean, but still above average for normal April water levels by 22 inches. Now in May, water levels have continued to drop four more inches, and overall, we are still 18 inches above normal levels. In other words, we aren't out of the woods yet, and erosion damage can still be done. The risk for that those, that coastal impact of shoreline erosion and flooding is definitely less, but it's still possible, especially as if we get an active storm or, you know, that moves through and uh, we see, you know, large winds and that could cause some increased wave action. Numerous lakeshore communities continue to battle the elements causing the erosion damage. Homeowners living on the edge with their homes nearly falling into Lake Michigan or cities such as South Haven trying everything to save what they can. South Haven alone has had flooding in their wastewater treatment plant, closed roads for almost a year and adding barriers to protect South Beach underground reservoir. We have uh, HESCO barriers in place to protect actually the, we have an underground water storage for the water filtration plant, and we're gonna leave the, that there as well. The city of South Haven plans to leave all mitigation measures in place in fear of the water rising again. The Great Lakes have natural water cycles. According to the Army Corps of Engineers, typically we see a springtime rise with extra rainfall and runoff, then peaking in the summer months, and finally, a seasonal decline in the fall and winter with with increased evaporation. Typically on Lake Michigan Huron, we could see usually in a yearly cycle, it's about a 12 inch cycle. City officials in South Haven estimate last year's record high water level damage would cost millions, but these lakeshore communities need help with the bills. Spending that much money in one year would basically cost the city to shut down with no leftover funds. We did put together a presentation where we estimated about $20 million to get everything fixed um, and to, to keep services and everything open as if there was not a water, a high water event. Um, we were also able to quickly attack three critical infrastructure needs that we had to address immediately. After immediately fixing high priority repairs, the city of South Haven and so many other communities know there's more work to be done fixing the damage as water levels will continue to change each and every year. It's something that's on our radar, something that we're going to be budgeting for and something that we're going to have to keep our eye on. Lake Michigan water levels changing is nothing new as many Michiganders likely recall the last time we had high water levels back in 1986. This most recent spike, though, was a quick, drastic change as we went from record low levels in 2013 to record high in 2020, making that just a seven-year turnaround. I'm Candace Monticelli, Fox 17 News.